Toya Monastery. This is the place where meditation yogis can know and see all that Venerable Buddha Gosa has written about in his book called the Visuddhi Maga or the Path to Purification. There are many things to see at Paak Forest Monastery. In this brief moment, we will attempt to show you a few things that make up the components of the daily life at Pa'ak Meditation Center. You will be brought through a portion of the daily schedule, starting in the morning and then slowly going through to the day's end. Wake up time is at 3.30 a.m. After the yogis get their personal things together, they meditate from 4 o'clock a.m. to approximately 5.30 a.m. Afterwards, they chant the four daily reflections on how they should use their robes, their food, their dwelling places, and their medicines. Breakfast is served at approximately 6 o'clock a.m. Venerable Pa'ak Saidao leads the alms food line and then the foreigner monks, or what we call bhikkhus, are to follow. During lunch, the foreigners are served different food selections. This different food selection is easier to digest for foreigners who are not used to the local Burmese cuisine. There are approximately 50 foreigner monks here at one time, which makes up approximately half of the 100 to 110 foreigner residents. Shortly afterwards, the local Burmese monks get their food as well. They are served the regular local cuisine. The younger monks, which we call Samaneras, get their food after that. The meals for the whole monastery feed approximately 700 residents. The meals are sponsored daily by one single person or by a group. The meditation hall and Venerable Pa'ok Saidao's Kuti are located at the base of Chitala Babata Hill. The views from this hill are spectacular. Venerable Pa'ak Saidao's Kuti was built and donated together with the meditation hall in the year 2000. The Kuti serves not only as his personal residence, 
but it is also used for meditation yogis interviews and for special meetings as well. The Ashoka Pillar is much respected by all Theravada Buddhists. This represents the propagation efforts by an Indian king who was changed by the Buddha's teachings. The teachings have been lost in India, but today they are survived in Burma as well as other countries. We owe much reverence to King Ashoka for the continuation of the Buddha's teachings. Before all of the construction took place, Venerable Paul Oxido lived contently in a traditional Burmese-style kuti. Today, there are over 250 individual kutis at Paok Forest Monastery. Over time, much construction has taken place. These are some of the first kutis that were built at the bottom of Chitala Babata Hill. Here is where the meditation yogis can stay when they first begin their practice at Paok Meditation Center. The yogis can practice in solitude and reside peacefully in their dwelling place. Step by step, this is where they will learn the Buddha's teachings systematically so they can be able to progress along the Buddha's path. Some of the newer kutis are more remote. They are larger. And of course, they are very beautiful. Nayana duba ga ga yenga madura vara drobida amida guna gana dara. Walking the Buddha's path can sometimes be very difficult, but many efforts have been made to make the bhikkhus feel comfortable. Now nearly every kuti is supplied with water and electricity. Because of this, many bhikkhus find much peace living deep within the forest. At Pa'ak Forest Monastery, some bhikkhus are allowed to live in this very way. There are many kutis built deep within the forest according to the donor's wishes. There are many different styles and some are simple and quite old. Recently, some newer designs have been implemented, and today the construction has grown, and now there are many kutis. Some of the kutis are remote and allow for the monks to enjoy solitude. The meditation hall, which is also called Dhamma Vihari Sima, was inaugurated in the year 2000. The meditation hall allows for more than 400 individual meditators to comfortably sit with each other at the same time. The upper floor accommodates approximately 225 bhikkhus. Meditation is the main activity here. 
The yogis begin their practice with mindfulness of breathing or the practice of four elements meditation. Afterwards, they penetrate their 32 parts and then they will move on to the white casino using the skull of the yogi in front of them as their object of white. Later, they will penetrate their mentality and materiality. They will then know and see their past lives and causes so they can properly practice vipassana meditation until they reach Nibbana. Venerable Paul Oksido makes himself very accessible to the male foreigner yogis. The yogis are encouraged to interview with Venerable Paul Oksido on a daily basis. The local monks are able to interview with the Saido under special circumstances as well. The teachings are quite detailed and Nibbana is not easy to reach. Likewise, it takes a very skilled teacher to give the detailed systematic instructions to the meditation yogis on the path. Saidao has taught many people the contents of the Visuddhi Magga, the path to purification. Now, with his success, he is frequently invited to teach abroad in other countries. When the Saidao is away teaching abroad, Venbo Rewata takes on the teaching role for the male foreigner yogis. Venerable Rewata also teaches the female yogis whether the Saidao is present or not. He is very skillful in both English and in his teaching abilities as well. Lunchtime is one of the main events of the day. The bhikkhus must come from many different parts of the monastery. The bhikkhus must arrive early so they can prepare for the meal of the day. They use this time to properly wrap themselves in their robes. According to the bhikkhu rules, they must cover themselves properly. This is called wearing full robes. All the bhikkhus must follow this dress. Venerable Paul Oksaidao leads the alms food queue. Although Saidao can easily have his food brought to him, he too gets his own food while following this rule as well. When the Saidao is ready, the gong is rung. There are usually more than 700 people who eat at Pauk Monastery each day. First comes the foreigners who take only one meal. In this line, there are approximately 18 foreigners who take only one meal. 
There are usually 50 foreigner bhikkhus living at Pa'ak at one single time. Next to follow comes the local bhikkhus who take only one meal. These monks do not eat breakfast in the morning and appreciate their free time for their own individual practice. Even though the bhikkhus only take one meal per day, there is plenty of food for them to eat and they are not malnourished. The foreigners are served first so that it is easier to serve them the different food. The foreigners may take the local Burmese food if they wish as well. After the local one meal bhikkhus get their food, the rest of the foreigner bhikkhus who take two meals per day receive their food as well. Finally, the major line, which has the local bhikkhus who take two meals per day, follows in line, starting with the senior bhikkhus. The line takes approximately 20 minutes to complete before everyone gets their food and then they can begin eating. The rest of the bhikkhus are to follow. Afterwards, the young novice monks follow last. After the nuns get their food, the lay people prepare to get their meal. They chant a daily reflection on how important the food they are to receive is able to help them with their goal, that is, to be successful in their meditation. In the meantime, the monks are walking to their place where they will begin to eat their meal. At the same time, food is served in the lower monastery. There are no separate one meal or two meal lines at this serving station. Most of the women stayed near the lower monastery. Therefore, the nuns and laywomen get their food at this monastery after the monks receive their food. There are approximately 50 foreigner nuns and laywomen living at Pa'a Forest Monastery at one single time. Eventually, everybody gets their food. After the foreigner nuns get their food, the local nuns, or what we call sila shins, wait in line to receive their food. There are approximately 130 nuns living at Pa'ok Forest Monastery 
at one single time. After the monks receive their food, they begin preparation for eating their meal. Then they can finally begin eating. Whether or not the monks take one meal or two meals per day, they are not allowed to eat after high noon or around 12 o'clock p.m. Even so, the monks have more than one hour to eat all they need, which is plenty of time. Although the food helps keep the bhikkhus going, sometimes health problems can arise. The clinic was created for this purpose of storing and dispensing medicines to bhikkhus in need. Various medicines are available for sicknesses that commonly arise. These are donated by individuals and groups, also sometimes by the World Health Organization. About twice a week, doctors of Western medicine come from the local hospital in Malamyan to diagnose the bhikkhus who are ill. Next to the clinic is the hospital, or what we call the Arogya Sala. In this building, there are eight rooms where the bhikkhus can be looked after while they are recovering from their illnesses. If the case is strong, they are sent to the local hospital in Malamyain. Next to the hospital is the library, or what we call the Pitaka building. In this building, there is the library on the top floor where all the books are stored. The lower two floors have over 30 dormitory rooms. On the first floor is the Sangha office. This is where much of the paperwork and administration work is performed daily. The top floor is where all of the books are stored and can be borrowed to the monastery residence. Books have been donated over the past two years and now there are many titles. There are now over 1,500 English books for the foreigners to read, complete with a full English translation of the Buddhist Pali Canon. The translations are by Wisdom Publications and by the Pali Text Society. Other titles include topics on meditation as well as general dhamma. There are many other books as well on topics such as self-help, psychology, health, and learning strategies. Other foreign language titles exist also. 
These books are primarily in German and French. And there is also a large Chinese collection too. Down the road exists the Pali school. In this building, the young novice monks begin their basic Buddhist studies. They are to memorize many Buddhist texts. They do this by reciting the text in front of a teacher. This is the traditional way of learning text by rote memory. They are taught by Buddhist scholars who have learned in the same way when they were young novice monks long ago. The monks who are able to continue year after year will eventually become very learned scholars too. The main road between the lower monastery and the upper monastery was built in the year 2001. Before, it was just a dirt path large enough for the food car to travel through. This road stretches about one mile long. The middle monastery serves its purpose for carrying out special community transactions for the bhikkhus desiring purification. The residents also have several special duties that they must take care of. There are only 30 kutis at the middle monastery and there is usually an ongoing waiting list to become a resident. The lower monastery is the oldest of the three. As in all monasteries, there are many kutis where the bhikkhus can take up their residence. There is a Sima Hall as well. Before the female meditation hall was finished, this Sima Hall was used by the women meditation yogis since they live closest to this monastery. This monastery is also equipped with qualified Pa'uk meditation instructors. Here is where they can ask the necessary questions so they may progress in their meditation. The female meditation hall or what we call Metta Vihari, was completed during the 2005 Vasa. This meditation hall is quite large and spans three floors, with a total square footage of over 33,000 square feet. The ground floor is used for lodging while the first floor is used for meditation. The spacious topmost floor is used for meditation and also for Dhamma talks or bhikkhu ceremonies. This hall is quite large, but it is expected to fill up quickly 
just like the other meditation halls. The women yogis and nuns live in special kutis outside the lower monastery boundary. The kutis are built on special land provided for this purpose. There are many different styles. Most of these kutis are made of concrete masonry and there are many kutis alongside the road too. The recitation of the Patimoka or the 227 rules that the bhikkhus must follow takes place on the new and full moons of the month. The monks are called one by one and seated according to their ordination date. Tradition calls for one bhikkhu to recite the rules in the Pali language by memory. The text is about 45 pages long and takes a fast talker about 45 minutes to recite. Once the monks are seated, the chanting begins. <laughs> ตังกะบุบะเกสังบาริโตเกอะตะมะโนอะโรจิตะบาริมอกังอุติติตะมิตันตะเสยตะนะตะรุตันตุโนมะมะนะติกะโรมะยันตะติยาบาริโตอะย